Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Poets and Quants' online MBA panel. Today, we're talking to admission gurus from three leading programs to help you find the right online MBA for you. I'm your host, Christy Bleizeffer with Poets and Quants, and I want to welcome all of our viewers out there. Please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions, and I'll do my best to get to those as we move along. And of course, thank you all for taking the time um, to be with us today, our, our great panelists. Um, we'll just start by letting each of you introduce yourself. Please give us your, your name, title, and a little bit about the school you represent. Brian, let's start with you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me, Christy. My name is Brian Ransom. I'm Senior Assistant Director of MBA Admissions, um, specifically for the Flex MBA Online for Marketing and Communications. Um, at Georgetown McDonough, our mission is to build global business knowledge and inspire principal leaders to serve the common good. We have global leaders, a welcoming culture, a close-knit community, and worldwide alumni network. And we believe that Georgetown McDonough School of Business is the perfect launch pad for your career and exceeds the expectations you have for yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Sarah, how about you? Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah McIntosh. I am the admissions director here at Ross at Michigan Ross for the part-time MBA program. So I am over the weekend MBA program and then obviously the online MBA program, which we are uh, here to talk about today. Uh, in general, Ross is known as a very collaborative MBA. Uh, we here at Ross, we are looking to you know, develop and empower leaders to make a positive impact in the world through business. Uh, we can do that for many of our programs. So like I said, through the online we'll talk about today. Very good. And uh, Laura. Thanks, Christy. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Tremaine, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for MBA at UNC. Uh, UNC Keenan Flagler, located in Chapel Hill, but our online program is obviously, we have students all over the country, just like all of these guys. And our program has been in existence for almost 12 years now. So we are um, an online program that was online way before Zoom was popular after the pandemic and whatnot. So we really have a lot of experience perfecting that online education. Um, we are consistently ranked number one with U.S. News and World Report and also with Fortune magazine. And then Princeton Review, I think we were our number two this year. So I think these online rankings uh, speak to just our um, quality of our MBA program and our reputation as having been in this space for a really long time. Well, thank you all for joining us again. Um, we'll just like really start by getting into some of the nuts and bolts of your online programs. Um, you know, tell us how long you've been around, how long it generally takes to complete any of the kind of nuts and bolts things that students are looking for. And uh, Brian, we'll go, sorry, Brian, we'll go back to you. It's okay. It's all right. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, so we are welcoming our first online cohort this fall, um, the Flex MBA Online, which we call it FXO for short. So you might hear me refer to it as um, FXO. And it's just because it's in my brain. Yeah. Um, is in response to student and market demand for an even more convenient formatting. Um, it's evolution of our Flex MBA, which is in person, um, which grew from our highly successful um, evening part-time format. And you can take this program 24 months to five years. Um, it takes 24 months to five years to actually complete it. Um, it is 54 credits to complete this program. The first half is four courses. Second half is um, electives. If you want to complete the program fully online, you have a curated list of electives you can choose from. If you want to, um, you certainly can, um, can take electives in person on the Georgetown campus as well. And this includes our residencies. Oh, very good. Um, uh, Sarah, how about you? Sure. Uh, yeah, so our online MBA program at Michigan Ross uh, first started in September 2019. Uh, so still fairly new, um, but we've had you know quite a few graduates already. Our program on average takes three to three and a half years to complete. We technically have up to 10, but we have, we're not seeing anyone on that path. Uh, so on average, three to three and a half. It's our most flexible option. So students have a little bit of choice in the self pace that they'd like to go through the program. If they need to take a semester off, if they want to double up on courses, they, they have that option. It's designed to fit working professionals. So people that have ever-changing schedules, you never know, you know, where life, where work, uh, home responsibilities are going to go. So very flexible program. The majority of the program is online through asynchronous and synchronous learning. So asynchronous, stuff that you do you know, on your own, reading, modular simulation, 
and then synchronous sessions, times where you get online with your faculty and fellow classmates for a live class discussion. Then we have our residencies, so where students come here on campus or to an international location, and then our Ross is kind of like signature map programs so where you work with a, a real company on a, on a real project to be able to use the skills that you learned in the program uh, for that project. So uh, just kind of very high level there. Uh, but like I said, three, three and a half self-paced program. Very good. And uh, Laura. So MBA at UNC, our students have anywhere from 18 months to three years to complete the program. So it's very flexible. We have four different start dates. Uh, we have April, July, October, and January. We have over 800 students currently enrolled in our program. And our program, I would just say, similar to others, is just very flexible. So you will take about 32 credits of core classes, and then the remainder 30 credits are your electives. So while we are such a big program, uh, we can offer so many different elective courses at varying times all throughout the week. So I think that it offers a lot of flexibility to our students. Yeah. Um, Brian, do you want to, uh, you know, elaborate a little bit on the flexibility at uh, McDonough? Uh, do you have a, do students have a lot of choice in electives and, and that kind of thing? Yeah, of course. So the core classes will be a mix of asynchronous and synchronous content, meaning that the first half is going to be asynchronous. Um, the second half of that course is going to be um, asynchronous. Um, the electives will be either 50-50 of that or 100% synchronous, where our required core courses are 31.5 credits and the electives make up 22.5 credits. But the electives with the online specifically is a curated list that they can choose from, but they'll have a wider variety if they choose to do some electives in person, which they have that option. Yeah, very good. Um, well, Laura, let's go to you. Tell us about your interview process. How does it work? You know, what can, can how can candidates kind of best prepare for um, an interview at UNC? Sure. All of our students will get an interview as part of the application process. So when they submit their application, they will be working with an admissions counselor throughout that process, and that admissions counselor will help them set up their interview. Their interview typically lasts an hour. Uh, it's meant to be a time for us really get to get to know you. So we have a team, an amazing team of interviewers that interview each applicant and ask them questions just about their goals, about why an MBA, about why Keenan Flagler, about the way they work in teams, leadership, all of those things that I think most MBA applicants will feel comfortable answering. There's no trick questions. There's nothing meant to really throw anyone off. It's just a chance to tell your story, to share things that might not be on your application, and a way for us to get to know you. Because at Keenan Fogler, we definitely have a fit and culture about us. We are very collaborative in nature. We emphasize a lot of leadership and we're looking for applicants who are really going to fit in that uh, culture and really be able to contribute to our program as well as you know, get a lot out of it as well. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what about at McDonough? Yeah, of course. So the interviews are offered by invitation only. Um, invitations to interview are extended following each application deadline and will continue up until the decision release date. Um, also, additionally, waitlist candidates may be invited to interview after initial decisions are released. Um, this year, we've been on a specific assignment of doing an anonymous interviewer, so they won't know exactly who's interviewing them, um, you know, who it is exactly. And I think the best prep for any interview is just pretty much knowing um, for ours specifically is knowing why McDonough, why you chose, why are you choosing McDonough and taking the time to practice interviewing can be very beneficial as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sarah, how about at Ross? Sure, sure. So our admission process is a rolling admission uh, process. So on average, it takes six to eight weeks to hear a final decision uh, if a student or if an applicant is admitted. So that interview, uh, if invited, is typically around four to five weeks on average after the application is submitted. So if the admissions committee likes to see what they see in the application, the person would be invited for an interview. The interview, as kind of we're all saying here, it's, it's a chance for us to get to know you. Uh, we want to know who you are as a person, we, how you work on teams, uh, kind of where, you know, what you, what brought you to an MBA. I would say kind of thinking about how to prepare for it is one, take a deep breath. Uh, just know that 
again, we want to get to know you. Don't feel like there are any correct answers or one answer that we're looking for. We, we at least at Ross, we, we like a variety of student. We want people to bring different skills and, and different backgrounds into the program. Uh, so definitely, again, looking to get to know you. I would say if there's anything within the application that you think might be of question, uh, just kind of assume you're going to be asked about it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just we're looking to paint more of a picture because you only have so many words in an essay. And with an interview, you can explain it even more. So we're happy to hear and, uh, you know, any more explanations that, that you're looking to from your from your application. And again, it's not a bad thing. It's we're just looking to get to know you. Yeah, very good. Um, well, we'll just keep you on the hot seat while we have you here, Sarah. Uh, why don't you tell us about the the different concentrations that may be offered um, at uh, Ross, um, when they might be selected, what kind of guidance students get in the process of choosing? Yeah, so at Ross, uh, the MBAs are general MBAs. There are a few exceptions um, within that, but most of our students come out with a general MBA. So what that means is that our students will do all of the business fundamentals, the accounting, finance, strategy, marketing, et cetera, all of those, so you get a good basis, and then you uh, go into your elective courses. So this is where you get to choose a little bit where you want to go. Are you looking to take more marketing electives? Are you looking to take strategy, accounting, maybe a little bit of each? Uh, that's really up to the student, uh, but that way, you know, they, they got all, you know, they were able to receive all that business fundamentals and you have that education, but if you want to dive deeper into something, you can. When students are looking at courses, we have a suggested pass, pass for the four courses, just because some should come before uh, some of the electives. So we do have a suggested pass, but our students are able to connect with our academic advisors. They can go to them and say, you know, I'm looking at this kind of industry, this kind of career, what class might work best elective wise, or, you know, do I have enough credits with this? Have I reached the 57 credits? Our academic advisors are happy to connect with our online students. They're very flexible with their time. So they don't have to come on campus to meet with them. They're happy to meet over Zoom, happy to meet after hours. Very, very flexible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Laura, how about at Keenan Flagler? So our students will start with those core classes that, and get that foundation of their business education. And then as they enter the second part of the program, they get to decide if they want to choose a concentration or just remain totally flexible and choose the classes that they're most interested in. So uh, most of our students end up with a concentration because I think most of them have a path and have something very specific that they're wanting to gain from their MBA. So we do offer six different concentrations, and they are data analytics and decision make making, which is a really popular one these days. Entrepreneurship, again, really great for those people who are looking to pivot and start a business and to really be in a small, tight group of people who are all doing that. We have a finance, a management and leadership. This is one of our newest concentrations. We've always done a huge focus on leadership in our program, but we decided we really wanted to make sure we had that as a concentration. The so students can really uh, have that focus very specific to leadership. We also have marketing, and then we have a strategy and consulting. So there's a lot of options, but I always tell students, it's really about finding the classes that you're interested in taking, and then um, and then seeing if it works out, that that's, that concentration makes sense for you. If, if it does, great. If it doesn't, then you've really just taken the classes that were of most interest. Yeah, very good. Um, and Brian. Yeah, of course. Um, so when we designed um, our curriculum, we surveyed MBA employers to see if they cared about MBAs having concentrations, which they didn't. So we eliminated them. Um, instead, it's more important that people determine the skill gaps that they have and determine which electives they need to fill them. So you'll have the opportunity to select electives from a curated list, as I mentioned before, offered online, then you'll also have the freedom to come in person for those electives or those ILEs, which we call intensive learning experiences, if you choose so. And those intensive <clears throat> learning experience are about 1.5 credits and about up to six weeks to actually complete within the um, semester. Very good. And uh, we'll just keep you right here while we have you. <laughs> um, what would you say are the key differentiators for the MBA program at McDonough? Uh, do you offer a unique course that you know is only offered there, or or what do you what what's special about your program? 
Yeah, of course. Thank you. That's a great question, Christy. So um, just starting out our global business experience, um, when you travel abroad and work with the international company, um, we are known for our global MBA. Uh, we also have our two in-person DC residencies. Um, also, um, you're within our Hariri building, which is the newest building on campus, the newest um uh, our business school is the newest building on campus, and it's on the historic Georgetown University campus as well, where you have other schools there as well, and the hospital. Um, it's the same rigorous faculty as the full-time and flex in person. The flex MBA online is not just a passive program, but some online programs are completely asynchronous, but at McDonough, we value the class discussion. Um, also, they'll have access to our McDonough Center um, Career Center. Um, most part-time MBAs don't offer access to the career centers, but this is something that sets us apart. Um, you're not excluded from dropping your resume for MBA jobs, attending career events, et cetera. Um, we offer the ability for you to attend all campus career events. But in addition, we provide hybrid access for some of these events so you can attend virtually. And then we'll have the curated list of virtual events as well. Very good. Uh, Sarah. Sure. Uh, so it's it's hard to pick one, right? I think we're all great champions for, for <laughs> our programs. Uh, so I, I would kind of pick three. Uh, so the first I would say was faculty, fellow students, and then curriculum. So faculty, uh, same, right? We have the same faculty in our online MBA program that we do in our full-time, our weekend executive uh, at BBA program. So our students are receiving that same rigorous degree, just in a, in a more flexible format. Our faculty put a lot of work into these online courses because they take what they do in person and develop it online. So they really want that connection, want that uh, you know, back to back discussion with fellows or with their students uh, and, and back with them, which is really great. Uh, our students uh, would be the second was because they come from a variety of different backgrounds. So as I mentioned, kind of by the interview process, we want people in our program that have traditional business background. We want people that are doctors, lawyers, people that are in the military, people that are just, you know, maybe they're 15 years out of their undergrad, maybe they're only eight. It's a wide, wide variety because when you're sitting in the classroom, of course, you're going to learn from the faculty, but also you learn from each other because that's who you're doing projects with. That's who you're hearing other discussion with. So uh, the students are, are really, really great uh, in that. And they know that the information that you learn, the education that you get from an MBA is obviously the most important, but very close to that is the network and all of our students understand that. So even in the online format, they're making those connections. Then the last one I would say uh, would be the curriculum. As I kind of mentioned, it's a little bit about the general MBA. So as you move up within a company, right, you need to know how the whole company works, not just kind of one department or whatever you're over. So as you continue throughout your career, it's really great You've touched a little bit of everything so you can kind of understand uh, where each department is going, which one day you may be over all of them. <laughs> um, with the curriculum, uh, you do have that asynchronous, that self-learning, but then again, those synchronous live sessions and then the residencies. So each student is required to complete three on-campus or international residencies, depending on where they want to take them. Uh, but it's a really great way just to dive deeper into the connections that they made virtually. Uh, it's intensive. Another thing our faculty put a lot of work into, uh, they really enjoy coming on campus and being together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Laura, the differentiators at uh, Keenan Flagler, Flagler, excuse me. Sure. So again, because we are such an established program with 12 years of experience in the space, um, our program is very large, but we operate like a small program in the sense of all of our classes, which students are required to attend the synchronous classes every week, are 90 minute sessions with at most 18 to 20 students in each class. So that's very unusual for a program that has over 800 students. That means that we have multiple sections of each class. They're all taught by UNC Keenan Flagler faculty that teach across all of our MBA formats. And those small classes, students are on camera, they are participating in class, interacting with faculty, with our other students, breaking out into group sessions during that class time. And that makes it truly unique. You're never in a class experience where you've got um, like 70 people in a class, people are off camera doing other things. Our students are all very interactive during that 90 minute class session. So that synchronous class, I think really helps our students 
engage closely with the faculty, but also really get to know their peers because they're responsible for the work they do all week, that asynchronous classwork all week. They're responsible for really making time for that so that they can learn and have get the most out of their MBA, but also so that they can impact the experience of their classmates. And just like Sarah mentioned, we attract students from all varieties of industries and um, you know, we've got doctors, we've got engineers, we've got teachers, not people just that have a business school background, but uh, very unique. And those interactions, I think, are really special. So that's definitely one differentiator. And then I would have to say our summit, which is um, these summits are offered quarterly, and we have two in Chapel Hill each year, and then two international summits. And these are opportunities for 120 to 200 students to gather and to really dive deep into a topic. So when you come to Chapel Hill, you get to choose what you want to focus on. And so there's always opportunities to learn more about leadership, maybe consulting or entrepreneurship. And then when you go international, you get to learn all about doing business in that country. So this past year, we have traveled to Vancouver and to Zurich, Switzerland. And in the fall, we're going to Cape Town, South Africa. And next year on Target, we have um, Buenos Aires and Warsaw, Poland. Oh, so right. it's just this incredible experience uh, that from a Thursday to a Sunday, again, with a group of 120 students, all being in the same place. And... Uh, I, I had the opportunity to go to the Zurich summit and honestly, the student experience, you know, they came up and were talking and they just said how close it made them feel to each other, having this unique experience together. And then the learning opportunity to go and, you know, get to partner with universities in different countries and industries over there. It's just uh, very special and unique. So the summit's would definitely be another one. And then I guess the third one would just be that Tar Heel family. And that just goes into all the students that are currently in the program. And then the alumni, we have over 42,000 Keenan Flagler alumni, not to mention the whole UNC community. So as I mentioned earlier, I would just say our people are very collaborative in nature. And so that plays into the fact that when you are an alum of the program or reaching out to want to connect with someone and learn more about an industry or an employer, our alumni are so excited to engage with current students and other alumni and help them make a connection, learn more about what they do. And that alumni network, I think, um, really helps catapult people into meeting their career goals and finding new and exciting opportunities. Yeah, very good. Um, Brian, we actually have a question from one of our viewers for Georgetown mm -hmm. specifically. Perhaps you can help him out a little bit. Can you can you tell just a, us a little bit about how your Flex MBA is different from the ex Executive MBA? So um, the I know for a fact, I don't know much about the Executive MBA. However, I know the Executive MBA is more for those individuals who are um, trying to achieve an MBA who have already reached a certain senior level of position within like their career path or um, just trying to grow further where they are. Whereas though an MBA is someone who is trying to either... Um, I would say grow in their role where they are within their industry or pivot um, their career industry. So an executive MBA will be more for a senior level um, individual. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Laura, let's, we'll just go right back to you. Um, tell me about, um, you know, if I were to ask your alumni, what is, uh, why they chose uh, Keenan uh, Flagler? Um, what do you think they would say? I would definitely think they would say the people, as I mentioned, it's just that community and that network of people is um, just very unique. They, everything that we do is really based on that collaboration and teamwork. So that environment that we foster at MBA at UNC keeps going within their careers and that community. Uh, so I, th I think the definitely the people and then the faculty, I mean, our faculty 
are truly amazing and they are experts in their fields. We have adjunct faculty who live all over the world and teach classes. So having those resources and those professionals to learn from uh, really help our students gain skills that they can use the next day in class and uh, have the transferable skills for their entire career. And uh, Brian, what about at McDonough? What would the alumni say? Yes, and just to kind of echo Laura a bit on community, definitely our community is super collaborative, vibrant, supportive, and it's not cutthroat. Just to give an example, you know, we have MBA employers that actually come to campus to interview, you know, our MBA students, and you'll have a student that may interview and leave that interview and let their um, peer know exactly what that company is looking for. So it's very supportive in that sense. Um, and our alumni as well, like have the mentality of Hoyas helping Hoyas. I remember like when the pandemic started and, you know, um, job offers were being rescinded left and right. And, you know, our um, career center um, reached out to a lot of the alumni and letting them know like what was happening with the offers being rescinded and, created like a spreadsheet and all of these alumni were putting in the jobs that were um uh positions that were open where they are and it was just like a long list of positions and this was like a great example of Hoyas helping Hoyas. Also our teachers who actually want to teach in the classroom and this goes back to our Jesuit roots um to hire teachers who want to teach not just research and publish and of course our McDonough Career Center um, which is there with all of these awesome resources to assist full-time flex in person and flex online with what they need to pivot or grow with, within where they are. Um, our location is in DC is super strong and um, where recruiters come to us, they come to McDonough because of the great location and, and of course our global reputation and focus. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sarah, what about Ross alumni and why they chose you? First, <clears throat> so uh, I would say first that that all of our students are looking for a challenging MBA that that will change them and give them new skills. And the word challenging sometimes can be scary, but the students that come to Ross want that. Uh, they understand that an MBA is not something that you just put letters at the end of your name. It's something that, that you need to grow and you need to learn. Uh, so they come here for that rigorous program. Uh, they wanted something flexible, but they didn't want to sacrifice the rigor. So they were looking for that kind of that both, which, which we're able to provide. So they really enjoy that. And again, with faculty, knowing that it's the same in the full-time, that's in our online, they're looking for that same high quality work that, that they do in our in-person program. And then kind of the same thing, right? It is the network. Uh, the Michigan Ross and Michigan in general, the alumni network is, is like none other. Uh, I'm on info sessions all the time with uh, like panelists, with student panelists and alumni. And they say, even as a student, I was able to reach out to alumni. Our career development office connected me with fellow, you know, alums or, you know, after they graduated, fellow alums. So knowing that the network is being built even within the online format is really important because that's, that's not always the case. Uh, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to, depending on how, how you know, you're looking at your MBA, it can be difficult to build that network. But here at Ross, time and time again, our students, our alums, they talk about how they're building those networks like they expected in an MBA. And I know a lot of our alumni are still connecting. We have alumni that are reaching back out. Okay, you know, this new class, how can we connect with them? How can we tell them you know, what, how to go through the program? What tips and tricks? And then career-wise, what can we do? So those two, you know, the rigor and then the, the network is really important for our alums. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you all. Um, Brian, do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the opportunities or, um, or ways students can come together um, and kind of be in person to form that network um, at Georgetown, you know, the online students? Yes, of course. So, of course, the residencies, um, both of the first two residencies, the first one is in the is in the beginning of the first year, um, which would definitely be on campus within your cohort. The second residency is um, in, in the beginning of the second year. Um, and also our global business experience, which is at the end of the second year um, within that summer to travel abroad. And also those in-person electives, um, we do have 
you know, applicants that are in the DMV to, um, district in the Maryland and Virginia area who, you know, want to do the program online, but loves the opportunities to actually do some of those electives in person. And then you have a lot of individuals who are all over the U.S. However, they have strong connections to the D.C. area as well. So they may have family or friends where they can have that opportunity as well. And then, of course, on-campus activities. And this includes events and organizations. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sarah, how about at Ross? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, each student needs to complete three residencies. Uh, so we do have residencies here in Ann Arbor, and then we do have international residencies. Uh, so a few, we've been in Germany, uh, we've been in Chile, there's, they're going to Italy in a few weeks, so all around, uh, but that gives an opportunity for them to dive deeper into those connections made online. Our students kind of, they said that they're kind of like a mini reunion, because you're past the <laughs> Where do you work? Where do you live? You, you don't need to ask those questions because you're already met virtually. Uh, so you're, you're diving deeper into those connections. So they're able to connect with Ross in person that way, as well as coming on campus uh, curriculum wise for electives. So kind of same thing if you're in the area or what we're seeing is with the remote work, people are moving here for, for a semester just to take certain classes. Uh, so they do have some options to take electives here on campus. And then they're able to attend different clubs, institute centers here. Uh, they can come on campus for a speaker. They can come here for a conference. We see them being able to, to network with full-time students, with weekend MBA students through uh, those you know, kind of on-campus uh, activities. But then beyond that, just kind of times where they can be together to, to build that community, we have an online MBA council and they actually plan different like meetups. So I know there's been some in Detroit, in Chicago, in New York. Uh, they did one in LA. So they're able to meet people you know, that live near you or if you're traveling around from work, uh, we hear all the time that, yeah, you know, I met this person on campus and then I was traveling for work and I went to their town, we met up. Uh, so it's beyond just the curriculum that, you know, in the clubs and centers here at Roth. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, Laura, how about at Keenan Flagler? Sure. So just like Sarah was mentioning, we have students all over the country with almost 800 and some enrolled currently, we have them in every city, um, many towns all over. So there's lots of opportunities to meet up and not only with just online students, but with anyone from Keenan Flagler or UNC. So those are great things that they can do close to home. In terms of coming on campus, we have our summit. So we, I mentioned those before, two are in Chapel Hill every year and the two international. And students can take up to four of those for credit. And actually a lot of the costs involved in those summits are included in their tuition. So it's a really uh, amazing opportunity to take advantage of. And then students also can take electives in our classes. So because, we are UNC Keenan Flagler. We have a evening program that meets on Monday nights. We have a weekend program here in Chapel Hill. And we also have a weekend program in Charlotte. So students from all over the state of North Carolina and from neighboring states come in to Chapel Hill and Charlotte, and they have those classes available to them in, in terms of their elective space available. So it's a nice option option for people who might want that flexibility of having an online MBA for the majority of their of their time that they're taking classes to then be able to have that in-person elective. Mm -hmm. So there's there's definitely lots of opportunities for that in-person connection. Um, and, and then most of our students will come for graduation. And that's just kind of a fun time. But Absolutely. we do offer two graduations uh, in the fall and spring for our online MBA. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, Sarah, at Ross, um, you know, given the digital and virtual world we now all live in, would you say an online MBA program helps prepare students for the business world in a way that perhaps other programs can't? Yeah, absolutely. So as we all know, the world was just more virtual than it ever was. And <laughs> we're seeing that it, it still is. Uh, it's still a lot of uh, work, a lot of remote work. I don't know about you guys, but we see a lot of remote applicants, uh, working applicants in, for our program. Uh, so just in general, learning how to work in teams. I know we've all done it, but you can do it or you can excel at it. Uh, so teaching students how to work in that, that virtual world is really important. And also because doing an online program, you know, we have international students, we have students, again, all over the country in different jobs, different functions that you might not get access to in an in-person program. So learning how to work with people 
from, you know, work on teams from different industries, from different functions, from different backgrounds is really important, which you can really only get in something, you know, sometimes in an online program. So knowing how to develop those skills uh, is, is really important. And I would just say kind of in, in general, it's because it's kind of cutting edge, right? It, you're learning new things. The faculty are really excited to be within like teaching within this program. So they're learning or they're looking to develop different skills, looking to bring in new ideas because this type of learning is, is somewhat new. Um, I mean, a lot of programs have been around, but it's being ad, you know, adapted and, and being changed and you know, every program is different. So it's really great to see where those skills come from. Yeah. Um, Laura, what about, what do you think? How is it preparing people for kind of the unique business environment we find ourselves? I mean, I think I echo everything Sarah said. I think we would all agree that we see these things in our online programs. And I think the developing of relationships and really learning how to do that in an online environment, um, people that you're seeing in your classes and then reaching out and building those relationships. We hear all the time from students who said, some of my very best friends are from MBA at UNC. They're not from an undergrad program or maybe another master's program that was even in person. So they're learning how to really build relationships um, through people that they have met online. And I think that that's really important because as we are working with people and businesses and not actually meeting with them as much as we used to, it's important that we know how to build those relationships. So I think that's a skill that the online MBA programs are definitely helping students build. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Brian. Yeah, of course. So um, all of Georgetown McDonough MBA students are graduating with the same degree, whether full-time, flex in person, or online. And I would say that you're definitely getting a a great experience because yes, you'll have to complete the majority of your courses, especially your required courses online, but just having that opportunity to be in person, to have, um, to be, you know, in a mix of full-time and flex in-person students, um, that's just a great experience. Um, and then also achieving the same career aspirations you set for yourself, um, you'll have access to the um, entire Georgetown network. A global business experience is a way to gain real world business experience in lieu of not being able to do an internship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have one more question um, from our, uh, our viewers. Um, I think that we might've answered this but just to, to definitively answer it, um, do, do you, does each of your programs require at least an, one on-campus visit? I think you said that you all do. Is that correct? So yes. you mean like with the residencies? Yes. yes. To be on, on campus. Yes. 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 Um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, uh, miscommunicate anything from that. <laughs> so. um, well, I, I, can I just jump in? Yes, Our program actually you, does not require that. So we okay. used to have that requirement in place. We used to require all students to complete two summits. But since COVID, we just feel like we want to honor uh, our students' needs yeah. and priorities and comfort level. And so we have lifted that requirement for now. That being said, I would say all students want to do at least for the most part. Uh -huh. But if there's any hesitancies with that, we do not have those requirements in place. Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much for that clarification. Thank, sure. thank you. Um, Sarah, uh, we'll go to the next question then to you. Um, you know, a lot of times MBA students are very focused on a specific role or company that they're trying to get to um, and less so on the, the type of leader they might become. Can you kind of walk us through some of those soft skills that um, MBA students um, get in programs and why they're so important? Yeah. So I, mean, I guess first I would say we understand that a lot of people come with goals, but I would say leave 10% of yourself open uh, to different jobs, different industries, because we, we hear from our students all the time. I had no idea this industry existed. I had no idea this function. So, so be open to, to other things uh, and other jobs. But yeah, knowing that people have goals and they want to stick with them, that's okay uh, too. Uh, but I would say kind of looking at kind of that journey and going through is, is definitely the, the skills that you want to learn within the MBA. You don't want to know, you know, just have the skills for that next job because with an MBA, you're going to continue going, right? That's why you get an MBA is, is for your, specifically for your career, right? So you're looking to continue to develop. So you want to make sure that Maybe these skills right now aren't exactly applicable to my job, but 
two jobs later, they will be. So definitely a big thing at Ross is, is leadership. How we, we understand at Ross that not every team is the same. Not every team needs the same type of leader. So something that they that our faculty really develop here is having kind of that adaptable leadership because the type of leadership that you have in a crisis and the type of leadership you just have day to day might be a little bit different. Uh, so those kind of skills of being adaptable and, and uh, going to the situation is, is really important at Ross. Yeah. Uh, Laura, what do you think? So, yeah, I would say that there's uh, lots of skills that you're going to come out with and you don't always know what those are going to be until you start taking your classes and talking with other people and learning from your peers. And I think that that's the benefit of being in an online program where you're taking classes and having discussions and applying things the very next day, trying them out, coming back, re-talking about that. So it's um, kind of evolving those skills on, on, the, on, on the job. We have career coaches that are excellent that work with our students to really talk through their goals and think more long-term and think next steps. And then after you graduate, having lifelong career services, you know, is essential with always helping our students sort of evolve and change as, as they're learning and growing and stepping into new positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Brian. Yeah. So at Georgetown McDonough, you'll um, have exposure to, you know, many different backgrounds, um, different backgrounds coming from different industries who had different experiences. So you'll learn a lot from within your class as well. Um, as well, along with the faculty, but I always say like be patient with yourself and know that you know the goals that you have set for yourself may change by the time you complete your program. However, um, that's so what um, that's what's so great about an MBA. Um, it could take you in many different industries and job functions, so you can change your goals and still have that support and the resources um, that you need um, to achieve those. Also, Georgetown's care personalities or care for the whole person mentality is important. Um, we want you to not just learn about how to make a good balance sheet or marketing plan, but we want you to learn how to take care of people, um, how to lead, how to be inclusive and value diversity, and how to lead through change. Our extensive leadership curriculum will prepare you for this as well and opportunities to get involved in the community. Yeah, very good. Well, you know, I want to end with giving you guys all a chance to kind of, you know, say your last note or if there was something that you didn't get to mention yet, um, your last thoughts, and then please make sure you uh, tell people how's the best way to get in touch with your team if they have follow-up questions. And uh, Laura, go ahead. Well, I think we've all shared a lot of great information. I would just encourage anyone who's exploring an MBA to really ask a lot of questions, to learn as much as you can about every program, and to really find the right fit for you, because there's a lot of great MBAs out there, and they offer a lot of fabulous curriculum and faculty and all of those good things. Um, So I think everyone can find a place that's good for them. So asking the questions, doing your research. Uh, When you start an application at MBA UNC, you'll automatically be paired with an admissions counselor who will work with you throughout the entire process and answer your questions. So that's really the best way to get in touch with us and get your questions answered and just start down the process. But I think it's, you know, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to work full time and get your MBA. It's a lot to take on. um, And I think students get so much out of it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Brianna at uh, McDonough. Yeah, of course. So um, at McDonough, we are super excited to have launched the online MBA, um, which was actually last August. So like I said before, this will be our first cohort coming in this fall. Um, And this has been responsive to students and the market needs um, continue to be collaborative um, and creating an online community and making sure that our program is well executed. And I just want to highlight some of our Dean's key um, areas of focus are business to sustainability healthcare, AI in the future of work, global affairs and entrepreneurship. And of course, just like Laura just mentioned, our career center, um, we have many career advisors and peer advisors who speak to many industries who are well equipped to answer questions on that and get you to where you need to be. Um, You can definitely reach out to our main inbox and they can connect you with myself if you're interested in the Flex Online um, MBA. And I'll be happy to answer any questions and get you started if you're interested. Great. And uh, Sarah at Ross. Sure. So uh, Michigan Ross has a lot of different options uh, for an MBA. Are you looking in person? Are you looking online? I would definitely suggest talking to admissions advisors from each or talking to students from each. I think 
you know, it's one thing to, to hear from us, but I think talking to current students or alums is the best way to learn about a program, you can kind of see how it fit into their life, what they're doing with their MBA, uh, and all of that information about the different programs and connecting with students and connecting with admissions uh, can be found on our website. So two things that I, or excuse me, three things that I really point out is one, we do have phone consultations. So if you're looking to speak with an admissions advisor, they're 20 minutes. So if you want to ask very specific questions, we're happy to answer those. We have info sessions, so just general info uh, about all of our programs, which typically have a student panel, uh, so you can hear again directly from them. And then our part-time students hold a podcast called Working for the Weekend. It is a fantastic window into what it's like to be a student here at Ross. They tackle a ton of different topics, whether that's working with the career development office, uh, looking to pivot, how do you balance it all, work, kids, school, all of it. Uh, they speak with faculty. So those are kind of the three places. Uh, and again, just contact us in general from, from the website. Yeah, well, very good. Well, thank you all so much for your time and your great, valuable insights. And thank you to our viewers. Remember, there's a lot of other um, great conversations with other um, schools and panelists and students on our YouTube page or also at poetsandquants.com. So until we uh, see you again, have a great day. Thank you.